Mindfulness, Wikipedia article audio. Mindfulness is the psychological process of bringing one's attention to experiences occurring in the present moment, which can be developed through the practice of meditation and other training. The term mindfulness is a translation of the Pali term sati, which is a significant element of Buddhist traditions. In Buddhist teachings, Mindfulness is utilized to develop self-knowledge and wisdom that gradually lead to what is described as enlightenment or the complete freedom from suffering. The recent popularity of mindfulness in the West is generally considered to have been initiated by John Kabat-Zinn. Meditation Translations and Definitions Buddhism Sati and Samti Translation Alternate Translations Psychology Trait, State and Practice Trait-like Constructs State-like Phenomenon Mindfulness Practice Two-Component Model The Five Aggregate Model Cultivating Self-Knowledge and Wisdom Definitions arising in modern teaching of meditation Other usages Historical development Buddhism II Transcendentalism John Kabat-Zinn and MBSR Popularization, Mindfulness Movement Buddhism III Anapanasati, Satipana, and Vipassana Samprajana, A. Pramda, and Atapa. Bear attention. Therapy programs. Studies have shown that rumination and worry contribute to mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety, and that mindfulness based interventions are effective in the reduction of both rumination and worry. Mindfulness based stress reduction. Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy Clinical psychology and psychiatry since the 1970s have developed a number of therapeutic applications based on mindfulness for helping people who are experiencing a variety of psychological conditions. For example, mindfulness practice is being employed to reduce depression symptoms, to reduce stress, anxiety, and in the treatment of drug addiction. The practice of mindfulness also appears to provide numerous therapeutic benefits to people with psychosis, and may also be a preventive strategy to halt the development of mental health problems. Acceptance and Commitment Therapy Dialectical Behavior Therapy Clinical studies have documented both physical and mental health benefits of mindfulness in different patient categories as well as in healthy adults and children. Programs based on Kabat-Zinn's and similar models have been widely adopted in schools, prisons, hospitals, veterans centers, and other environments, and mindfulness programs have been applied for additional outcomes such as for healthy aging, weight management, athletic performance, for children with special needs, and as an intervention during the perinatal period. The necessity for more high-quality research in this field has also been identified such as the need for more randomized controlled studies, for providing more methodological details in reported studies and for the use of larger sample sizes. Mindfulness meditation involves the process of developing the skill of bringing one's attention to whatever is happening in the present moment. There are several meditation exercises designed to develop mindfulness meditation. One method is to sit on a straight-backed chair or sit cross-legged on the floor or a cushion, close one's eyes and bring attention to either the sensations of breathing in the proximity of one's nostrils or to the movements of the abdomen when breathing in and out. In this meditation practice, one does not try to control one's breathing, but attempts to simply be aware of one's natural breathing process slash rhythm. 
When engaged in this practice, the mind will often run off to other thoughts and associations, and if this happens, one passively notices that the mind has wandered, and in an accepting, non-judgmental way, returns to focusing on breathing. Other meditation exercises to develop mindfulness include body scan meditation where attention is directed at various areas of the body and noting body sensations that happen in the present moment. Engaging in yoga practices, while attending to movements and body sensations, as well as walking meditation are other methods of developing mindfulness. One could also focus on sounds, sensations, thoughts, feelings, and actions that happen in the present. In this regard, a famous exercise, introduced by Kabat-Zinn in his MBSR program, is the mindful tasting of a raisin, in which a raisin is being tasted and eaten mindfully. Meditators are recommended to start with short periods of 10 minutes or so of meditation practice per day. As one practices regularly, it becomes easier to keep the attention focused on breathing. Mindfulness meditation can be defined in many ways and can be used for a variety of different purposes. When defining mindfulness meditation, it is useful to draw upon Buddhist psychological traditions and the developing scholarship within empirical psychology. The Buddhist term translated into English as mindfulness originates in the Pali term sati and in its Sanskrit counterpart samti. According to Robert Scharf, the meaning of these terms has been the topic of extensive debate and discussion. Samti originally meant to remember, to recollect, to bear in mind, as in the Vedic tradition of remembering the sacred texts. The term sati also means to remember. In the Satipanasutta the term sati means to remember the dharmas, whereby the true nature of phenomena can be seen. Scharf refers to the Mylandipanha, which explained that the arisement of sati calls to mind the wholesome dhammas such as the four establishings of mindfulness the five faculties, the five powers, the seven awakening factors, the noble eight-factored path, and the attainment of insight. According to Rupert Gethin, should be understood as what allows awareness of the full range and extent of Dhammas, Sati is an awareness of things in relation to things, and hence an awareness of their relative value. Applied to the Satipanis, Presumably what this means is that sati is what causes the practitioner of yoga to remember that any feeling he may experience exists in relation to a whole variety or world of feelings that may be skillful or unskillful, with faults or faultless, relatively inferior, or refined, dark or pure. Scharf further notes that this has little to do with bare attention, the popular contemporary interpretation of sati since it entails, among other things, the proper discrimination of the moral valence of phenomena as they arise. The Pali language scholar Thomas William Rhys Davids first translated Sati in 1881 as English mindfulness and Sam Sati right mindfulness, the active, watchful mind. Noting that Daniel John Goggerly initially rendered Sam Sati as correct meditation, Davids explained. Sati is literally memory but is used with reference to the constantly repeated phrase mindful and thoughtful, and means that activity of mind and constant presence of mind which is one of the duties most frequently inculcated on the good Buddhist. John D. Dunn asserts that the translation of sati and samti as mindfulness is confusing. A number of Buddhist scholars have started trying to establish retention as the preferred alternative. Bhikkhu Bodhi also points to the meaning of sati as memory. The terms sati slash smriti have been translated as am. 
Haynes and G. Feldman have highlighted that mindfulness can be seen as a strategy that stands in contrast to a strategy of avoidance of emotion on the one hand and to the strategy of emotional over-engagement on the other hand. Mindfulness can also be viewed as a means to develop self-knowledge and wisdom. According to Brown, Ryan, and Cresswell, definitions of mindfulness are typically selectively interpreted based on who is studying it and how it is applied. Some have viewed mindfulness as a mental state, while others have viewed it as a set of skills and techniques. A distinction can also be made between the state of mindfulness and the trait of mindfulness. According to David S. Black, Whereas mindfulness originally was associated with esoteric beliefs and religion, and a capacity attainable only by certain people, scientific researchers have translated the term into measurable terms, providing a valid operational definition of mindfulness. Black mentions three possible domains. According to Brown, mindfulness is a quality of consciousness manifest in, but not isomorphic with, the activities through which it is enhanced. Several mindfulness measures have been developed which are based on self-reporting of trait-like constructs. According to Bishop, E.T. Alia, mindfulness is, a kind of non-elaborative, non-judgmental, present-centered awareness in which each thought, feeling, or sensation that arises in the attentional field is acknowledged and accepted as it is. Mindfulness as a practice is described as According to Stephen F. Hick, mindfulness practice involves both formal and informal meditation practices, and non-meditation-based exercises. Formal mindfulness, or meditation, is the practice of sustaining attention on body, breath, or sensations, or whatever arises in each moment. Informal mindfulness is the application of mindful attention in everyday life. Non-meditation-based exercises are specifically used in dialectical behavior therapy and in acceptance and commitment therapy. In a paper that described a consensus among clinical psychologists on an operational and testable definition, Bishop, Lau, ETAL proposed a two-component model of mindfulness. The first component involves the self-regulation of attention so that it is maintained on immediate experience, thereby allowing for increased recognition of mental events in the present moment. The second component involves adopting a particular orientation toward one's experiences in the present moment, an orientation that is characterized by curiosity, openness, and acceptance. 232. In this two component model, self regulated attention involves bringing awareness to current experience, observing and attending to the changing fields of objects from moment to moment, by regulating the focus of attention. Orientation to experience involves maintaining an attitude of curiosity about objects experienced at each moment, and about where and how the mind wanders when it drifts from the selected focus of attention. Clients are asked to avoid trying to produce a particular state, but rather to just notice each object that arises in the stream of consciousness. 233. An ancient model of the mind, generally known as the five aggregate model enables one to understand the moment-to-moment -moment manifestation of subjective conscious experience, and therefore can be a potentially useful theoretical resource to guide mindfulness interventions. The five aggregates are described as follows. This model describes that sensory consciousness result in the generation of feelings, perception, or volition, and that individuals' previously conditioned attitudes and past associations influence this generation. The five aggregates are described as constantly arising and ceasing in the present moment. 
the practice of mindfulness can be utilized to gradually develop self-knowledge and wisdom. In this regard, Buddhist teachings provide detailed instructions on how one can carry out an inquiry into the nature of the mind, and this guidance can help one to make sense of one's subjective experience. This could include understanding what the present moment is, how various thoughts, etc., arise following input from the senses, the conditioned nature of thoughts, and other realizations. In Buddhist teachings, ultimate wisdom refers to gaining deep insight into all phenomena or seeing things as they are. Mindful Attention Awareness Scale, Freiburg Mindfulness Inventory, Kentucky Inventory of Mindfulness Skills, Cognitive and Effective Mindfulness Scale, Mindfulness Questionnaire, Revised Cognitive and Effective Mindfulness Scale, Philadelphia Mindfulness Scale. Mode Deactivation Therapy Other Programs Scientific Research Movement Schools Education Business Law Prison Programs Government Criticism Risks Notes Sources Published sources Web sources The Toronto Mindfulness Scale measures mindfulness as a state-like phenomenon, that is evoked and maintained by regular practice. The State Mindfulness Scale is a 21-item survey with an overall State Mindfulness Scale, and two subscales. Mindfulness is a way of paying attention that originated in Eastern meditation practices, paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally, bringing one's complete attention to the present experience on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Harvard Law School's program on negotiation hosted a workshop on mindfulness in the law and alternative dispute resolution. Many law firms offer mindfulness classes. Since the 1970s, most books on meditation use definitions of mindfulness similar to John Kabat-Zinn's definition as present moment awareness. However, recently a number of teachers of meditation have proposed quite different definitions of mindfulness. Shinzen Young says a person is mindful when they have mindful awareness, and defines that to be when concentration power, sensory clarity and equanimity working together. John Yates defines mindfulness to be the optimal interaction between attention and peripheral awareness, where he distinguishing attention and peripheral awareness as two distinct modes in which one may be conscious of things. The English term mindfulness already existed before it came to be used in a Buddhist context. It was first recorded as mindfulness in 1530, as mindfulness in 1561, and mindfulness in 1817. Morphologically earlier terms include mindful, mindfully, and the obsolete mindiness. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, mindfulness may also refer to a state of being aware. Synonyms for this state of being aware are wakefulness, attention, alertness, prudence, conscientiousness, awareness, consciousness, observation. Mindfulness as a modern, Western practice is founded on modern vipassana, and the training of sati which means moment-to-moment -moment awareness of present events, but also remembering to be aware of something. It leads to insight into the true nature of reality, namely the three marks of existence, the impermanence of and the unsatisfactoriness of every conditioned thing that exists, and non-self. With this insight, the practitioner becomes a so-called satpana, a stream-enterer, 
the first stage on the path to liberation. Vipassana is practiced in tandem with Samatha, and also plays a central role in other Buddhist traditions. According to Paul Williams, referring to Eric Frau Wallner, mindfulness provided the way in early Buddhism to liberation, constantly watching sensory experience in order to prevent the arising of cravings which would power future experience into rebirths. According to Vedder, Dhyana may have been the original core practice of the Buddha, which aided the maintenance of mindfulness. According to Rhys Davids, the doctrine of mindfulness is perhaps the most important after the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. T.W. Rhys Davids viewed the teachings of Gautama as a rational technique for self-actualization and rejected a few parts of it mainly the doctrine of rebirth, as residual superstitions. Kabat-Zinn himself refers to Thoreau as a predecessor of the interest in mindfulness, together with the other eminent transcendentalists Emerson and Whitman. The collective experience of sages, yogis, and Zen masters offers a view of the world which is complementary to the predominantly reductionist and materialistic one currently dominating Western thought and institutions. But this view is neither particularly Eastern nor mystical. Thoreau saw the same problem with our ordinary mind state in New England in 1846 and wrote with great passion about its unfortunate consequences. The forms of Asian religion and spirituality which were introduced in the West were themselves influenced by transcendentalism and other 19th century manifestations of Western esotericism. Transcendentalism was closely connected to the Unitarian Church, which in India collaborated with Ram Mohan Roy and his Brahmo Samaj. He found that Unitarianism came closest to true Christianity, and had a strong sympathy for the Unitarians. This influence worked through on Vivekananda, whose modern but idiosyncratic interpretation of Hinduism became widely popular in the West. Vipassana meditation, presented as a centuries-old meditation system, was a 19th-century reinvention, which gained popularity in Southeast due to the accessibility of the Buddhist sutras through English translations from the Pali Text Society. It was brought to Western attention in the 19th century by the Theosophical Society. Zen Buddhism first gained popularity in the West through the writings of D.T. Suzuki, who attempted to present a modern interpretation of Zen, adjusted to Western tastes. In 1979, John Kabat-Zinn founded the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program at the University of Massachusetts to treat the chronically ill. This program sparked the application of mindfulness ideas and practices in medicine, 231 for the treatment of a variety of conditions in both healthy and unhealthy people. MBSR and similar programs are now widely applied in schools, prisons, hospitals, veterans centers, and other environments. Mindfulness practices were inspired mainly by teachings from the Eastern world, particularly from Buddhist traditions. One of MBSR's techniques, the body scan, was derived from a meditation practice of the Burmese Uba Kin tradition, as taught by S. N. Goenka in his Vipassana retreats, which he began in 1976. It has since been widely adapted in secular settings, independent of religious or cultural contexts. Mindfulness is gaining a growing popularity as a practice in daily life, apart from Buddhist insight meditation and its application in clinical psychology. Mindfulness may be seen as a mode of being, and can be practiced outside a formal setting. The terminology used by scholars of religion, scientists, journalists, and popular media writers to describe this movement of mindfulness popularization, and the many new contexts of mindfulness practice which have cropped up, 
has regularly evolved over the past 20 years, with some criticisms arising. Sati is one of the seven factors of enlightenment. Correct or right mindfulness is the seventh element of the Noble Eightfold Path. Mindfulness is an antidote to delusion and is considered as a power which contributes to the attainment of nirvana. This faculty becomes a power in particular when it is coupled with clear comprehension of whatever is taking place. Nirvana is a state of being in which greed, hatred and delusion have been overcome and abandoned, and are absent from the mind. Anapanasati is mindfulness of breathing. Sati means mindfulness, Entna refers to inhalation and exhalation. Anapanasati means to feel the sensations caused by the movements of the breath in the body. The Anapanasati Sutta gives an exposition on this practice. Satipana is the establishment of mindfulness in one's day-to-day -day life, maintaining as much as possible a calm awareness of one's body, feelings, mind, and dermas. The practice of mindfulness supports analysis resulting in the arising of wisdom. Vipassan is insight into the true nature of reality, namely the three marks of existence, the impermanence the unsatisfactoriness and the non-self nature of every conditioned thing that exists. With this insight, the practitioner becomes a so-called satpana, a stream-enterer, the first stage on the path to liberation. In the Theravadan context, vipassan is commonly used as one of two poles for the categorization of types of Buddhist practice, the other being samatha. According to the contemporary Theravada orthodoxy, samatha is used as a preparation for vipassan pacifying the mind and strengthening the concentration in order to allow the work of insight, which leads to liberation. Vipassan meditation has gained popularity in the West through the modern Buddhist Vipassana movement, modeled after Theravada Buddhism meditation practices, which employs Vipassan and Entna meditation as its primary techniques and places emphasis on the teachings of the Satipana Sutta. In Buddhist practice, mindfulness also includes samprajana, meaning clear comprehension and apramda meaning vigilance. All three terms are sometimes translated as mindfulness, but they all have specific shades of meaning. In a publicly available correspondence between Bhikkhu Bodhi and B. Allen Wallace, Bodhi has described Ven. Nyanaponika Thera's views on right mindfulness and Sampajana as follows. He held that in the proper practice of right mindfulness, Sati has to be integrated with Sampajana, clear comprehension, and it is only when these two work together that right mindfulness can fulfill its intended purpose. Georges Dreyfus has expressed unease with the definition of mindfulness as bare attention or non-elaborative, non-judgmental, present-centered awareness, stressing that mindfulness in Buddhist context means also remembering, which indicates that the function of mindfulness also includes the retention of information. Robert H. Scharf notes that Buddhist practice is aimed at the attainment of correct view, not just bear attention. J. Garfield, quoting Shanti Deva and other sources, stresses that mindfulness is constituted by the union of two functions, calling to mind and vigilantly retaining in mind. He demonstrates that there is a direct connection between the practice of mindfulness and the cultivation of morality at least in the context of Buddhism from which modern interpretations of mindfulness are stemming. Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction is a mindfulness-based program developed by John Kabat-Zinn at the University of Massachusetts Medical Center, which uses a combination of mindfulness meditation, body awareness, and yoga to help people become more mindful. While MBSR has its roots in spiritual teachings, the program itself is secular. 
Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy is a psychological therapy designed to aid in preventing the relapse of depression, specifically in individuals with major depressive disorder. It uses traditional cognitive behavioral therapy methods and adds in newer psychological strategies such as mindfulness and mindfulness meditation. Cognitive methods can include educating the participant about depression. Mindfulness and mindfulness meditation, focus on becoming aware of all incoming thoughts and feelings and accepting them, but not attaching or reacting to them. Like CBT, MBCT functions on the theory that when individuals who have historically had depression become distressed, they return to automatic cognitive processes that can trigger a depressive episode. The goal of MBCT is to interrupt these automatic processes and teach the participants to focus less on reacting to incoming stimuli, and instead accepting and observing them without judgment. This mindfulness practice allows the participant to notice when automatic processes are occurring and to alter their reaction to be more of a reflection. Research supports the effects of MBCT in people who have been depressed three or more times and demonstrates reduced relapse rates by 50%. Acceptance and commitment therapy or is a form of clinical behavior analysis used in psychotherapy. It is a psychological intervention that uses acceptance and mindfulness strategies mixed in different ways with commitment and behavior change strategies to increase psychological flexibility. The approach was originally called comprehensive distancing. It was developed in the late 1980s by Stephen C. Hayes, Kelly G. Wilson, and Kirk Strissel. Mindfulness is a core exercise used in dialectical behavior therapy, a psychosocial treatment Marcia M. Linehan developed for treating people with borderline personality disorder. DBT is dialectic, explains Linehan, in the sense of the reconciliation of opposites in a continual process of synthesis. As a practitioner of Buddhist meditation techniques, Linehan says, This emphasis in DBT on a balance of acceptance and change owes much to my experiences in studying meditation and Eastern spirituality. The DBT tenets of observing, mindfulness, and avoidance of judgment are all derived from the study and practice of Zen meditations. Mode deactivation therapy is a treatment methodology that is derived from the principles of cognitive behavioral therapy and incorporates elements of acceptance and commitment therapy, dialectical behavior therapy, and mindfulness techniques. Mindfulness techniques such as simple breathing exercises are applied to assist the client in awareness and non-judgmental acceptance of unpleasant and distressing thoughts and feelings as they occur in the present moment. Mode deactivation therapy was developed and is established as an effective treatment for adolescents with problem behaviors and complex trauma-related psychological problems according to recent publications by Jack A. Apsha and Joan Swart. Since 2006, research supports promising mindfulness-based therapies for a number of medical and psychiatric conditions, notably chronic pain, stress, anxiety and depression, substance abuse, and recurrent suicidal behavior. Bell gives a brief overview of mindful approaches to therapy particularly family therapy, starting with a discussion of mysticism and emphasizing the value of a mindful therapist. The Japanese psychiatrist Shoma Morita, who trained in Zen meditation, developed Morita therapy upon principles of mindfulness and non-attachment. Since the beginnings of Gestalt therapy in the early 1940s, mindfulness, referred to as awareness, has been an essential part of its theory and practice. The British doctor Clive Sherlock developed adaptation practice in 1977. Adaptation practice is a structured program of self-discipline. 
Hakami therapy, under development by Ron Kurtz and others, is a somatic psychology based upon Asian philosophical precepts of mindfulness and nonviolence. Internal Family Systems Model, developed by Richard C. Schwartz, emphasizes the importance of both therapist and client engaging in therapy from the self, which is the IFS term for one's spiritual center. The self is curious about whatever arises in one's present experience and open and accepting toward all manifestations. Mindfulness relaxation uses breathing methods, guided imagery, and other practices to relax the body and mind and help reduce stress. Mindfulness has gained increasing empirical attention ever since 1970. According to a 2015 systematic review and meta-analysis of systematic reviews of RCTs, evidence supports the use of mindfulness programs to alleviate symptoms of a variety of mental and physical disorders. Other reviews report similar findings. A large meta-analysis on meditation research published in JAMA in 2014 however, found insufficient evidence of any effect of meditation programs on positive mood, attention, substance use, eating habits, sleep, and weight. No evidence was found that meditation programs were better than any active treatment. The study showed moderate evidence of improved anxiety, depression, and pain and low evidence of improved stress-slash-distress and mental health-related quality of life. Thousands of studies on meditation have been conducted, though the overall methodological quality of meditation research is poor and thus yields unreliable results. Recent reviews have pointed out many of these flaws. Nonetheless, mindfulness meditation is a popular subject for research, and many claim potential benefits for a wide array of conditions and outcomes. For example, the practice of mindfulness has been used as a potential tool for weight management, to achieve optimal athletic performance, as a beneficial intervention for children with special needs and their parents, as a viable treatment option for people with insomnia and effective intervention for healthy aging, as a strategy for managing dermatological conditions and as a useful intervention during pregnancy and the perinatal period. Recent studies have also demonstrated that mindfulness meditation significantly attenuates physical pain through multiple, unique mechanisms. Research studies have also focused on the effects of mindfulness on the brain using neuroimaging techniques, physiological measures, and behavioral tests. Research on the neural perspective of how mindfulness meditation works suggests that it exerts its effects in components of attention regulation, body awareness, and emotional regulation. When considering aspects such as sense of responsibility, authenticity, compassion, self-acceptance, and character, studies have shown that mindfulness meditation contributes to a more coherent and healthy sense of self and identity. Neuroimaging techniques suggest that mindfulness practices such as mindfulness meditation are associated with changes in the anterior cingulate cortex, insula, temporoparietal junction, frontolimbic network, and default mode network structures. Further, mindfulness meditation may prevent or delay the onset of mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. Additionally, Mindfulness-induced emotional and behavioral changes have been found to be related to functional and structural changes in the brain. It has also been suggested that the default mode network of the brain can be used as a potential biomarker for monitoring the therapeutic benefits of meditation. Recent research also suggests that the practice of mindfulness could influence genetic expression leading to a reduced risk of inflammation-related diseases and favorable changes in biomarkers. Mindfulness-based approaches have been tested for a range of health problems including anxiety disorder, mood disorder, substance abuse disorder, 
eating disorders, chronic pain, ADHD, insomnia, coping with medical conditions, with many populations including children, adolescents, parents, teachers, therapists, and physicians. As a major subject of increasing research interest, 52 papers were published in 2003, rising to 477 by 2012. Nearly 100 randomized controlled trials had been published by early 2014. Gray matter concentrations in brain regions that regulate emotion, self-referential processing, Learning and memory processes have shown changes in density following MBSR. Additionally, MBSR practice has been associated with improvement of the immune system which could explain the correlation between stress reduction and increased quality of life. Part of these changes are a result of the thickening of the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus the shrinking of the amygdala and the strengthening of the connections between brain cells. Long-term meditators have larger amounts of gyrification than people who do not meditate. Further, a direct correlation was found between the amount of gyrification and the number of meditation years, possibly providing further proof of the brain's neuroplasticity, or ability to adapt to environmental changes. Mindfulness meditation might help treat depression in mothers-to-be. High-risk pregnant women who participated in a 10-week mindfulness yoga training saw significant reductions in depressive symptoms. The mothers-to-be also showed more intense bonding to their babies in the womb. More research suggests mindfulness training improves your focus, attention, and ability to work under stress. Training may improve attention-related behavioral responses by enhancing functioning of specific subcomponents of attention and the ability to endogenously orient attention, the development and emergence of receptive attentional skills, which improved exogenous alerting-related process. A 2013 statement from the American Heart Association said that, when it comes to lowering blood pressure, that behavioral therapies, transcendental meditation, other meditation techniques, yoga, other relaxation therapies, and biofeedback approaches generally had modest, mixed, or no consistent evidence demonstrating their efficacy. Exercise-based regimens, such as aerobics, had relatively stronger supporting evidence. This is still a much debated topic however, as opponents argue that mindfulness-based therapy, through mechanisms like lowering stress responses and enhancing perceived calmness, may lower blood pressure. Nevertheless, MBSR can have a beneficial effect helping with the depression and psychological distress associated with chronic illness. Meditation also may allow you to modulate pain stronger. When participants in research were exposed to pain from heating, the brain scans of the mindfulness meditation group showed their brains notice the pain equally, however it does not get converted to a perceived pain signal. As such they experienced up to 40-50% to less pain. Preliminary evidence suggests efficacy of mindfulness meditation in the treatment of substance use disorders, however, further study is required. MBSR might be beneficial for people with fibromyalgia, there is no evidence of long-term benefit but low-quality evidence of a small short-term benefit. Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy has suggested to have positive results for the improvement of attention regulation, intelligence-related measures, creativity, learning ability, cognitive style, motor skills, and perceptional abilities. Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy also suggests to enact comparable neurophysiological effects related to attention and self-regulation as pharmacological treatments for ADHD. 
In 2010 a meta-analysis was conducted by Hoffman and colleagues exploring the efficacy of MBSR and similarly structured programs for adults with symptoms of anxiety and depression. The meta-analysis showed that between pre- and post-testing there was significant medium within group effect sizes observed on anxiety and depression and also small to medium between group effect sizes when comparing wait list, treatment as usual, and active treatment, further supporting the literature that states mindfulness-based therapies can be beneficial in treating symptoms of depression and anxiety. A broader meta-analysis conducted in 2004 by Grossman and colleagues found similar effect sizes when testing the physical and mental health outcomes following MBSR treatment. Many of the above-cited review studies however also indicate the necessity for more high-quality research in this field such as conducting intervention studies using larger sample sizes the use of more randomized controlled studies and the need for providing more methodological details in reported studies. There are also a few review studies that have found little difference between mindfulness interventions and control groups, though they did also indicate that their intervention group was treated too shortly for the research to be conclusive. These studies also list the need for more robust research investigations. Several issues pertaining to the assessment of mindfulness have also been identified including the current use of self-report questionnaires. Mindfulness is gaining a growing popularity as a practice in daily life, apart from Buddhist insight meditation and its application in clinical psychology. In this context mindfulness is defined as moment-by-moment -moment awareness of thoughts, feelings, bodily sensations, and surrounding environment, characterized mainly by acceptance, attention to thoughts and feelings without judging whether they are right or wrong. Mindfulness focuses the human brain on what is being sensed at each moment, instead of on its normal rumination on the past or on the future. The mindfulness movement has entered the mainstream, mainly through the work of John Kabat-Zinn and his mindfulness-based stress reduction program, launched at the University of Massachusetts Medical School in 1979. Since that time, clinical studies have documented the physical and mental health benefits of mindfulness in general, and MBSR in particular. Programs based on MBSR and similar models have been widely adapted in schools, prisons, hospitals, veterans centers, and other environments. According to John Kabat-Zinn the practice of mindfulness may be beneficial to many people in Western society who might be unwilling to adopt Buddhist traditions or vocabulary. Western researchers and clinicians who have introduced mindfulness practice into mental health treatment programs usually teach these skills independently of the religious and cultural traditions of their origins. Mindfulness has come to be seen as a mode of being, rather than a formal meditation practice, which can be practiced and maintained outside a formal setting. In 2012 Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio published A Mindful Nation, and has received a $1 million federal grant to teach mindfulness in schools in his home district. Mindful Kids Miami, Inc. is a tax-exempt, 501, non-profit corporation established in 2011 and dedicated to making age-appropriate mindfulness training available to school children in Miami-Dade County public and private schools. This is primarily accomplished by training educators and other child care providers to incorporate mindfulness practices in the children's daily activities. In 2000, the Inner Kids Program a mindfulness-based program developed for children, was introduced into public and private school curricula in the greater Los Angeles area. MindUP, a classroom-based program spearheaded by Goldie Hawn S. Hawn Foundation, 
teaches students to self-regulate behavior and mindfully engage in focused concentration required for academic success. For the last decade, MindUP has trained teachers in over 1,000 schools in cities from Arizona to Washington. The Holistic Life Foundation, a nonprofit organization that created an in-school mindfulness program called Mindful Moment, is currently serving almost 350 students daily at Robert W. Coleman Elementary School and approximately 1,300 students at Patterson Park High School in Baltimore, Maryland. At Patterson High School, the Mindful Moment program engages the school's faculty along with the students during a 15-minute mindfulness practice at the beginning and end of each school day. Mindful Life Project a non-profit 5013 based out of Richmond, California, teaches mindfulness to elementary school students in underserved schools in the South Richmond School District. Utilizing Curriculum, Rise Up is a regular school day intervention program serving 430 students weekly, while Mindful Community is currently implemented at six South Richmond partner schools. These in-school mindfulness programs have been endorsed by Richmond Mayor Gail McLaughlin, who has recommended additional funding to expand the program in order to serve all Richmond youth. Mindfulness practices are becoming more common within educational institutions including elementary and secondary schools. This has been referred to as part of a contemplative turn in education that has emerged since the turn of the millennium. The applications of mindfulness in schools are aimed at calming and relaxation of students as well as for students and educators to build compassion and empathy for others. An additional benefit to mindfulness in education is for the practice to reduce anxiety and stress in students. Based on a broad meta-analytical review, scholars argued that the application of mindfulness practice enhances the goals of education in the 21st century, which include adapting to a rapidly changing world and being a caring and committed citizen. Within educational systems, the application of mindfulness practices shows an improvement of students' attention and focus, emotional regulation, creativity, and problem-solving skills. As discussed by Ergas and Todd, the development of this field since the turn of the millennium has brought diverse possibilities as well as complexities, given the origins of mindfulness within Buddhism and the processes of its secularization and measurement based on science. Renshaw and Cook State as scientific interest in the utility of mindfulness-based intervention in schools grew steadily, popular interest in mindfulness in schools seemed to grow exponentially. Despite research on mindfulness being comparatively unexamined, especially with young students, the practice has seen a spike in use within the educational arena. A relatively recent addition to discourse around preventing school expulsion and failure, mindfulness is gaining popularity for its potential to improve students' social, emotional, behavioral, and learning-related cognitive control, thereby improving academic outcomes. Researchers and educators are interested in how mindfulness can provide optimal conditions for a student's personal development and academic success. Current research on mindfulness in education is limited but can provide insight to the potential benefits for students, and areas of improvement for future studies. Mindfulness in the classroom is being touted as a promising new intervention tool for young students. According to Chowdhury and Moses, although still marginal and in some cases controversial, Secular programs of mindfulness have been implemented with ambitious goals of improving attentional focus of pupils, social-emotional learning in at-risk children and youth, not least, to intervene in problems of poverty and incarceration. 
Emerging research is concerned with studying teachers and programs using mindfulness practices with students, and is discovering tension arising from the moral reframing of Eastern practices in Western school settings. As cited by Renshaw and Cook, unlike most other approaches to contemporary school-based intervention, which are squarely grounded in behavioral, cognitive behavioral and ecological systems theories, MBIs have their origins in Eastern religious traditions. Some school administrators are concerned about implementing such practices, and parents have been reported to take their children out of mindfulness programs because of their personal religious beliefs. Yet, MBIs continue to be accepted by the mainstream in both primary and secondary schools because, mindfulness practices, particularly in relationship to children who might otherwise be considered broken or unredeemable, fill a critical niche one that allows its advocates to imagine a world where people can change, become more compassionate, resilient, reflective and aware, a world with a viable future. As mindfulness in education continues to develop, Ethical consequences will remain a controversial issue because the generic description for the benefits and results of MBIs are largely concerned with individual and inward-focused achievement, rather than the original Buddhist ideal of global human connection. Available research reveals a relationship between mindfulness and attention. Semple, Lee, Rosa, and Miller argue. Anxiety can impair attention and promote emotionally reactive behaviors that interfere with the development of good study skills, so it seems reasonable that increased mindfulness would be associated with less anxiety. They conducted a randomized trial of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy for children that found promise in managing anxiety for elementary school-aged children and suggests that those who completed the program displayed fewer attention problems. In addition, Fluke shows how an eight-week mindfulness awareness program was evaluated in a random and controlled school setting, and measured the effects of awareness practices on executive functions in elementary school children. Their findings concluded. Participation in the Mindfulness Awareness Program was associated with improvements in behavioral regulation, metacognition, and overall executive functions. In the study by Fluke parents and teachers completed questionnaires which propose that participation in mindfulness programs is associated with improvements in child behavioral regulation. These perspectives are a valuable source of data given that caregivers and educators interact with the children daily and across a variety of settings. According to Eklund, O'Malley, and Meyer, school-based practitioners should find promise in the evidence supporting mindfulness-based practices with children, parents, and educators. Lastly, a third study by Zenner, Hernleben Kurz, and Weilich concluded, Analysis suggests that mindfulness-based interventions for children and youths are able to increase cognitive capacity of attending and learning by nearly one standard deviation and yield. Application of mindfulness-based interventions continue to increase in popularity and practice. Mindfulness-based interventions are rising across Western culture, but its effectiveness in school programs is still being determined. Research contends, mindfulness-based approaches for adults are effective at enhancing mental health, but few controlled trials have evaluated their effectiveness among young people. Although much of the available studies find a high number of mindfulness acceptability among students and teachers, more research needs to be conducted on its effects on well-being and mental health for students. A firmly controlled experiment Johnson, Burke, Brinkman, and Wade evaluated the impact of an existing and widely available school-based mindfulness program. No improvements were demonstrated on any outcome measured either immediately post-intervention or at three-month follow-up. 
Many questions remain on which practices best implement effective and reliable mindfulness programs at schools, and further research is needed to identify the optimal methods and measurement tools for mindfulness in education. Mindfulness training appears to be getting popular in the business world, and many large corporations have been incorporating practicing mindfulness into their culture. For example, Companies such as Google, Apple, Procter & Gamble, General Mills, Mayo Clinic and the U.S. Army offer mindfulness coaching, meditation breaks and other resources to their employees to improve workplace functioning. Mindfulness has been found to result in better employee well-being, lower levels of frustration, lower absenteeism and burnout as well as an improved overall work environment. Since high levels of mindfulness correlate with ethical decision-making and increase personal awareness and emotional regulation, mindfulness training has been suggested as way to promote ethical intentions and behavior for business students. Legal and law enforcement organizations are also showing interest in mindfulness. Mindfulness has been taught in prisons, reducing hostility and mood disturbance among inmates, and improving their self-esteem. Additional studies indicate that mindfulness interventions can result in significant reductions in anger, reductions in substance use, increased relaxation capacity, self-regulation, and optimism. Many government organizations offer mindfulness training. Coping Strategies is an example of a program utilized by United States Armed Forces personnel. The British Parliament organized a mindfulness session for its members in 2014, led by Ruby Wax. Various scholars have criticized how mindfulness has been defined or represented in recent Western psychology publications. These modern understandings depart significantly from the accounts of mindfulness in early Buddhist texts and authoritative commentaries in the Theravada and Indian Mahayana traditions. 62 Adam Valerio has introduced the idea that conflict between academic disciplines over how mindfulness is defined, understood, and popularly presented may be indicative of a personal, institutional, or paradigmatic battle for ownership over mindfulness, one where academics, researchers, and other writers are invested as individuals in much the same way as religious communities. The popularization of mindfulness as a commodity has been criticized, being termed mindfulness by some critics. According to Safran, the popularity of mindfulness is the result of a marketing strategy, mindfulness is the marketing of a constructed dream, an idealized lifestyle, an identity makeover. According to Purser and Loy, mindfulness is not being used as a means to awaken to insight in the unwholesome roots of greed, ill will and delusion, but reshaped into a banal, therapeutic, self-help technique that has the opposite effect of reinforcing those passions. While mindfulness is marketed as a means to reduce stress, in a Buddhist context it is part of an all-embracing ethical program to foster wise action, social harmony, and compassion. The privatization of mindfulness neglects the societal and organizational causes of stress and discomfort instead propagating adaptation to these circumstances. According to Bhik Habodi, absent a sharp social critique, Buddhist practices could easily be used to justify and stabilize the status quo, becoming a reinforcement of consumer capitalism. The popularity of this new brand of mindfulness has resulted in the commercialization of meditation through self-help books, guided meditation classes, and mindfulness retreats. Buddhist commentators have criticized the movement as being presented as equivalent to Buddhist practice, while in reality it is very possibly denatured with undesirable consequences, such as being ungrounded in the traditional reflective morality and therefore, 
astray from traditional Buddhist ethics. Criticisms suggest it to be either demoralized or remoralized into clinically based ethics. The conflict is often presented in concern to the teacher's credentials and qualifications, rather than the student's actual practice. Reformed Buddhist-influenced practices are being standardized and manualized in a clearly distinct separation from Buddhism seen as a religion based in monastic temples, as expressed as mindfulness in a new psychology ethic practiced in modern meditation centers. In media reports, people have attributed unexpected effects of increasing fear and anxiety panic or meltdowns after practicing which they suggest could expose bipolar vulnerability or repressed PTSD symptoms. However, according to published peer-reviewed academic articles, these negative effects of meditation are rare for mindfulness meditation, and appear to happen due to a poor understanding of what actually constitutes mindfulness-slash-meditation practices.